Hi, and welcome to today's bite-sized In Focus event for Minnesota Public Radio. I'm Rachel Young. I'm an In Focus producer, um, and this series, In Focus, is NPR's event series that's focused on disparities in our state. So over the past year, we've brought you conversations about housing access, re-entry after incarceration, and community responses to the trial of Derek Chauvin, among many others. We took a little break this summer, but as we get ready for school to start back up, we wanted to check back in with you all. Schools are really in the spotlight this fall as we enter another school year under COVID-19 safety policies with the Delta variant. And many school districts are also trying to figure out how to teach with cultural competency, you know, creating safe learning environments for students. And both of these things can get political fast and tense school board meetings about mask mandates and diversity, equity and inclusion have made headlines in Minnesota and beyond. But I wanted to bring the conversation back to the student experience today, because as we head into another year, I want to know how are the students doing and how can our communities support them? So I wanted to check back in with a former In Focus guest who joins me today. Derek Francis is the manager of counseling services at Minneapolis Public Schools. He joined us last year for a conversation about mental health and resilience among kids of color. And you can find audio and video from that event on our website. Um, and if you're watching live today, I want to invite you to share any questions you have for Derek in the comments section, and we'll try to get to those as we talk here. Uh, but Derek, thanks so much for joining us today. How's your summer been? How have you have you been able to get a little rest? Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, I uh, just I'm so glad that you all provide opportunities for these really important conversations. And this summer, I've had an opportunity to relax with my daughter. Uh, we love going to festivals in the community and checking out different uh, uh, cultural sites. And so that's what we've been doing and, and he, checking nice. out some movies in the park. Oh, sounds great. Sounds like some much needed rest. Um, well, mm -hmm. I'm hoping you could give our, I was hoping you could give our audience like a little reminder, you know, when you were with us last uh, year on, for the In Focus event, um, you were talking about the many stressors that students have experienced over the last year. So could you give us a little refresh? I mean, what are, what have kids been dealing with? I mean, hopefully summer has been a little bit of a break um, for, for students as well. But during the school year and as we enter this school year, what have kids been dealing with and um, what, how has that impacted the work that you've done with MPS? Yeah, uh, what we've been really mindful of is understanding that students, their patterns have been disrupted. Uh, you gotta remember uh, the past 18 or so months, they've been navigating uh, doing school differently. So we're aware of that transition for them of having to go into virtual learning and then the transition uh, back to in-person and now even socially uh, as we have conversations around mass and uh, with the Delta variant picking up. So students are, yeah, remember this is moment of uncertainty where they're looking to adults of what's going on, what's happening now, we have to wear masks again. I thought things were safe. So uh, having that sense of security and knowing that uh, the isolation and, and time where they haven't been around friends and, and to connect, that impacts students, that impacts how they feel emotionally. Uh, so that's one key thing. I think also being mindful of the transition if they're going into different grade level. Uh, but the other transition is home transition. So during this time, some students have had family members who they may have lost. So navigating that grief or if they had a family dynamic change, so maybe divorce or a separation, mm -hmm. uh, we know that impacts students. So those are uh, just some of the things that we know uh, that students are navigating in this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of change and a lot of, yeah, those those schedules being really disrupted. I'm wondering how you all at MPS and um, Counseling Services are preparing for this school year specifically. What did you learn last year and what are you trying to implement going forward? Yeah, uh, some of the things we, we, our number one focus is really re-engaging and reconnecting with students. And so as school counselors, we know that some students, uh, haven't really felt the connection with with uh, with uh, people at school. So our goal mm -hmm. is to do outreach as many uh, events that we can go to in the community, be in that orientation or uh, setting up community spaces uh, where we're getting to know students and family and reminding them, hey, guess what? We're coming back to school. Here's what it's going to look like. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're um, 
setting up uh, spaces in our schools to get to know students. So spaces to know, all right, what have you navigated over the past year and a half and setting up support. So if students have uh, navigated uh, uh, the loss of a family member, having grief groups to support them where they can talk about it and process it. Also uh, connecting with students who are looking to get to know other students from different backgrounds. I think one thing that we've heard from students uh, in our community and families is that uh, with uh, some of the major racial incidents that we've had, uh, we need to create opportunities where students can get to know about other people's cultures, uh, learn about uh, not just being in the same space with you, but actually learn about the cultures and the things that people have experienced and even some of the struggles that some of the communities have faced uh, from different backgrounds. And then being aware that some students have experienced some um, some struggles with their mental health. So while there's isolation from people, or maybe it's uh, video games that they're spending so much time on and being out of their routine. So we want to help students with some of those, uh, those personal skills, those academic skills of saying, all right, how can you set up a calendar for your day uh, to get back into the routine? How can you begin doing some uh, some reading, even just a little bit each day? Or how can you make sure that you're organizing your time to do some homework and take some breaks so you don't get overwhelmed? Because coming back to school and the grind of school is a transition and students have to build that stamina back up. For sure, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, in the last year, I'm sure that you've had less ability to have that real like face-to-face -face, uh, or a limited amount of time to have face-to-face -face interactions with students. Um, how have counselors sort of adjusted to to that when kids were you know learning from home, for instance? Um, do you feel like that was time that was lost to you know work with students um, on you know identity development or mental health support? Um, are there lessons that you've you know learned from from some of those early struggles that you're implementing as you're going into this year? Yeah, that I would say has been the part that I, I find to be exciting. I see this uh, as an opportunity. And so for school counselors in Minneapolis, especially, we took the opportunity to not even see it as learning lost time. We saw it as a way to dig in and get to know students more, know more mm -hmm. about who they are, more about their culture, their identity. And so we did a, a unit to start off last year on understanding your identity, where we asked students to share what are their different identities. Uh, and then we provided space for students to talk about it and dialogue. And students were like, wow, I didn't even know I was sitting next to you. I didn't know that was a uh, your first identity you felt was in your your uh, the language you speak. We had students saying, yeah, that's one of the key pieces of their identity. And then their peers were hearing and being like, I'm learning about you. And they're, they're engaging. And so we created virtual spaces to do that. We also engaged with families in the community. Uh, we held a how to talk about race with your kids uh, a parent session because we know so many parents in the past year and a half have been like, there's things going on. I don't know, is it too early to talk about this with my kids? Should I wait till they're older? Uh, uh, and so we created a space where we brought in family members throughout the community who shared what things they're doing to have the conversation about race with their kids in schools. And then also we created lessons where we're talking about how to combat racism in school, how to uh, speak up when you see something going on. And also uh, our goal is to make sure that uh, students see the school environment, uh, seeing that that's another area of learning, uh, preparing for college and career readiness, that's just as important as the academic pieces because they're going into a world where when they go to college or their first job, uh, they're going to be working and connecting with people from so many different backgrounds. And uh, so often we we don't really put enough emphasis on learning that skill and how enriching it is. It's enriching to their life to get to know someone of a different background. And our communities are becoming so diverse. So that's a skill we're really focusing on and seeing it as an opportunity for us as counselors. Great. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, offering some uh, resources and lessons for parents there. I'm curious, how else can parents um, support kids at home? You know, like if you have uh, not only like resources to share or um, th like lessons that they can uh, actually be using at home with their kids, but what stressors should they be aware of? Like going into this year, um, how can parents really continue the work that you're doing at home? 
Yeah, I know uh, some of the things I heard from students, especially students who are transitioning to a new school. So if you were in seventh grade at the beginning of the pandemic in that March, and you're now going into ninth grade, uh, making sure that students are, some students are feeling like, goodness, am I prepared? I haven't really been in school uh, for my whole eighth grade year, and now I'm going to high school where the credits count. I think it's so important uh, on the parent and to be in connection with the school. Be mindful of, well, what are the academic expectations? And I think being mindful of how even right now, before the school year starts, how you can slowly start getting kids back into the process of doing school. So I know even as an adult during the pandemic in the summer, I have stayed up a little later than usual uh, and, and and I haven't had a chance to sleep in. But knowing that kids are doing that and or they may have times where they're on their devices way more than usual. And so I think starting to get into the pattern, even setting uh, a structure of saying, all right, uh, how about we try to get to bed 30 minutes earlier this week? And how about we try to have 20 minutes of reading? Hey, read this, read three pages in it. Let me know what you read. Or, hey, let's, uh, as we're walking around the community, what are some ways you can start just uh, weaving in opportunities to learn? I think uh, providing that as we go back into the start of school will make where students can slowly start to build up their stamina. Even uh, for some students having the chance to eat anytime they want during the day, that's going to look different at school when it's like, all right, lunch is at this time. And I think just some of those things around uh, parents having the opportunity to tell their kids, hey, when you go back to school, here's some things that we know as a family that we desire for how to treat people from different backgrounds. So having those kind of real conversations, because We're all coming back into a school and in person when we've had so many major social events happen, whether it was the uh, the the murder of George Floyd uh, or coming back and having uh, after the election last year or the insurrection or uh, uh, Juneteenth being a national holiday. These are all things that have impacted our community socially and these are topics that will come up in school. So how can you uh, have the conversation with your children to say, hey, here's some things that have happened. Here's how we feel as a family. And here's how we want you to engage with other students and families in school. Uh, I think that's so important for, for your development as a, as a person and for your kid to be successful in school. Mm, yeah. And we've had a question here from um, Sarah, a member of our In Focus Facebook group. Um, She says, for kids to be all right, teachers need to be all right. I wonder about them and how they are faring. So, Derek, what about Mm -hmm. teachers? I mean, we've heard from folks asking what they can do to support teachers this year and um, maybe what schools are doing to support teachers as we head into another school year. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that you asked that question because I think uh, more than ever, uh, we realize the importance of teachers. If you're a teacher out there, what's up? I think you're awesome. Uh, I'm excited for us to get the school year going, and I want you to know you're valued. Uh, and even counselors, too, social workers, psychologists, engineers. And I don't think they hear that enough. And I think uh, I, I've worked at schools with some amazing educators. And so I think first and foremost, knowing that right now uh, there is some stress around uh, going back in person with the and and uh, and how to navigate masks and navigate uh, different pushbacks that 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 uh, some students or staff may have around that, but also be mindful that our teachers are coming off of a hard school year where they were doing the transition of virtual and then hybrid and then in person. Uh, I think also. Uh, be mindful that teachers are going to be working with students that have a variety of needs right now. Uh, So helping to uh, provide opportunities for collaboration uh, and to to do self-care. I know people always say that, yeah, self-care is so important, but then they don't do it for themselves. Me too. Uh, And so I think being mindful of how to take your lunch, take a break and have healthy conversations at lunch. Uh, and also be mindful of how you can find joy in the work that you do. Uh, one of my favorite ways to do that is uh, finding connections with students. So uh, I love sports and I love food. And so I find times to connect with students and other staff around things that I enjoy. So the Viking season is coming up. Uh, I love finding ways to connect with other students who enjoy sports. Uh, Uh, football or enjoy meals that or the state fair is coming up i love doing icebreakers with students around hey what's your favorite state fair food what's your what's the state fair food that you tried but didn't like i think we got to remember to come back to that humanity piece and offer ourselves some grace so maybe in that first week as a teacher spend time 
really focusing on building your relationship with students and build and getting to know them and building their stamina for the academic year. I think that'll help you and it'll help the students. And I think being open to um, connecting with the students and families on a level of not just academics, but saying, hey, uh, how are you doing as a family? How are your students doing at home? Because I think sometimes we miss that in the past year and a half where we didn't take the time to see what underlying things students are navigating. And I think that'll help bring us closer to connecting with our students and families that we start having some of those real dialogues too. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know we have to wrap up here in a minute, but I'm wondering if you could, if there are students out there who are feeling nervous about coming back to school or, you know, not super excited about being in the classroom again, or they feel like maybe they forgot, they forgot how to interact with their fellow classmates and they're anxious about it. What encouragement would you give to students as we're, you know, heading into this year, there's COVID uh, policies are still kind of in place. Um, I know there's a lot of anxiety about, you know, what that's going to look like. And there has been, I'm sure people are feeling tired of that and a little, you know, fatigued of, of, you know, dealing with the reality of what the pandemic looks like in schools. So for students who are feeling tired of, you know, having to do school in the midst of all this, what encouragement would you give them? Yeah, I'd, I'd first of all say students out there, uh, you all are miraculous because you're, I mean, I could know, I don't know what it would be like if I had to do school for uh, a year virtually, uh, elementary, middle or high school or college. So I think it's so awesome that you all have navigated and pushed through so much uncertainty. And I really think it's important to start uh, thinking about as you get into the new school year, uh, asking yourself some questions about your 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 who you are and what you want to share with people. So maybe even going to school year, knowing like what are being able to have conversations and get to know new people. So practicing the skill of saying, all right, what are some things that I did this summer? What are some things I did throughout the past year and a half that helped me grow? Uh, and reflecting on some of the strengths and skills that you have, you've adjusted so much. But then also, I think equally important is the skill of listening. Of when you go into school, ask questions and get to know someone of a different background and someone who maybe had a different experience during the pandemic and listen. Uh, taking time to say, all right, I want to listen to what, what it was like for you. What were times that maybe you had struggled during the pandemic? Or what did you do when you found yourself uh, not having much to do during the pandemic? Did you go outside? How did you stay connected with friends? But then also, I think, offering yourself grace. Uh, never in the history of, 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 of education have we seen such a huge transition like this. And so knowing that uh, you're right where you're supposed to be. There's no level or standard that's going to tell you like, oh, you're not smart enough right now. You're doing really well. Uh, and this is a new start to the school year where you get an opportunity to meet new people. And uh, I hope if you, uh, as you're looking at your classes, uh, find something in there that will be of interest to you. You never know what class, whether it's a elective or core class, that you might find something you're passionate about and it could lead to your post-secondary or it could lead to a major you have in college. And I think try to do as many uh, activities as you can. So whether it's, and it's not always sports, uh, it might be an opportunity to join a, a, a club after school, or it might be an opportunity to join music, or it might be an activity outside of school, uh, like Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or, uh, or things like that, where you get to know about people from, uh, from in your community. I really want to encourage you to do some of that uh, as we go into the new school year. Great. What great encouragement. Thanks so much, Derek. Um, I think we've got to wrap up here. We're getting at time, but um, thanks for joining us. Derek Francis is the manager of counseling services for Minneapolis Public Schools. Best of luck this year, Derek. Um, and Thank I'm you Rachel so Young, much for having me. Oh, yeah, it was good. This is great. Um, yeah, some real encouragement for our students, for families, teachers, for everyone in our communities. So thank you. Um, and I'm Rachel Young. I'm a producer for InFocus. And if you're watching today, you can stay tuned for more In Focus programs. We're coming back. Uh, we have programs coming up next month and into the school year. Uh, so you can learn more about those at nprnews.org. Thanks for joining us. Take care.